Hello, this is Dancing Bird, the autistic, your autistic prince. And this is Koala, just just Tom. No, uh, no fancy titles. We are here with, yet again, another sensational episode to speak the minds and the voices of Two the audience, Bumble of the people, know nothing. <laughs> of nerd culture. <laughs> so, you had a good week? Yeah, I've, I've had quite a good week. We've reached... Like higher numbers with the podcast than before. Like we're in high sixties now. Absolutely. Previous is what? Nearly one fifty. Hundred and fifty. Our pilot episode is now. I just recently looked on YouTube. So wow. And technically, that's episode zero or yeah, episode one. But yeah, yeah. I also want to. I think we did something very similar uh, last week. Is we're going to repeat ourselves? Let's face absolutely, it. Absolutely. Yeah. We. I want to give a little back to our already faithful audience you know one in particular which i i am sure he doesn't mind me bringing up his name is we we bring him up again Hi, last dave week. dave you're all right dave he bought me a bacon sandwich yeah he this did week. He now did. i i do i do feel we're stepping up in the world but at the same point this ain't no like starsky and hunter like you, you don't remember just one so dave where's my bacon sandwich mate oh wow favoritism here <laughs> well I feel but bad. Go on, go on. On a serious note, I actually do really appreciate no, Dave's yeah, comments. Absolutely. And any feedback, uh, whether it being positive or negative, within reason, you know, if you feel like we could be doing something better, don't hesitate to say something. We are here to entertain you after all. So we want to be able to know how we can be the best of what we're doing. Mm. Is that fair to say? Yeah. And also to my American friends, Tay and Nari, thanks for listening. <laughs> is that are they the ones yeah those those are the two main ones that they're american are god they're loud <laughs> oh. are they the ones who said i uh, think i've got a shall we say a good northern accent I, yes, that's all i'll say a, well i mean i don't uh, want to embarrass thanks to uh game of thrones america has just discovered that england's northern accent to many of them it, over it's there it's received it's helped game of thrones has helped the northern accent receive yeah, global recognition it's, uh, it's the it? daddy accent yeah. isn't it people say <laughs> the uh the sean the father figure which um just happens to turn some people on oh wow i don't know how to react to that i'm not good i'm not good i you know i appreciate it it's a thoughtful gesture but I don't know what to do with such attention, to be honest with you. Well, if I... you're every single go to America and clean up. <laughs> oh, wow. There was something I wanted to bring up as well. Um, now, we have had... Um, well, no, we haven't really, but we got uh, a certain someone saying we talked about Doctor Who a little bit too much last yeah, week. Yeah, and then we, I went back and listened and realised that we did ramble on for about a good half of the podcast about Doctor Who, even though I called it something about Matrix. But, so the, this is the only time I will reference it in this week's episode, is sadly one of the um, writers who wrote for Classic Who, Terence Dicks, has sadly passed this week. He has, and it always upsets me, I don't know about how you feel, I've, I've mentioned before, is when a sci-fi writer dies, or someone good in that vein of fiction, yeah. unless they've written, amazing things or loads of big things they sort of just die under the radar it, like it's if... always sad you, because sometimes i know precisely if you don't sorry to cut you off there but i think the like you feel they don't receive the recognition no, i mean stanley died obviously the world cried the, the, like, yeah it was a very sorrowful day when he died but when bob kane died a bit before our time did the world react in the same way bob kane for those who don't know is a man that made batman yeah, it's really bizarre, but I think and that's I, comics like. I think I think it's because as well, and it's uh, and this is a theory. It's not a very nice theory to listen to, but it is out there. The reason why, and please, if anyone disagrees with me, then fair enough. Your your opinion is equally as valid as mine. This is just what I think, so I'm probably wrong because it's me. Let's face it. But I think the reason why the world mourned the way it did when Stanley sadly left us was simply to get because into ultra heaven the amount of global recognition the amount of references he received uh, th- during the latter half of his years through just pop culture through all the shows well, think about the characters he's made i mean we, we're all fans of marvel in some way yeah or something but also you've got sci-fi writers like philip k dick do yeah. androids dream of electric sheep or blade runner for those that have just watched a movie absolutely i mean he was a nutter yeah, he was no, an absolute com- nutter. Completely agree. Um, going back in the conversation a little but bit. Philip K. Dick, I think you told not Philip K. Dick. Who 
uh, see, I've already forgotten his name. The person who sadly passed. Yes. Terence Dix. Terence uh, Dix. Go on. You told me he basically came up with the master. Exactly. For those who aren't aware of his contributions to Classic Who, who's a Doctor Who fan who just happens to be listening to this, he basically created the concept of the master. So, very, very sadly that he died. Anyway, I've got to stop. Uh, well, I've, no, I have to. No, I mean, have to, but, the master yeah. is... I know people don't like Doctor Who, but I want to talk about the master a bit because... Absolutely. It's, it's talk good, about what you want. It's, it's our show. <laughs> it's, uh, for those that don't know, the master is the type of villain that I just He's love. the Moriarty, wasn't he? He's, that was the idea of the master. But, He's the Moriarty to the Doctor's Sherlock. Yeah, but the, the thing with the master, which I like in other things, it parodies to like... Loads of shows and things. You come up yeah. with a million example is he's a villain that thinks he's the good guy, or he's the villain that he's essentially the other side of the same coin of your protagonist. Uh, absolutely, he's, yeah. He's the tails to the doctor's head. He's the yeah. He's basically as much as I love the and show. He, he doesn't see himself as a villain sometimes. As much as I love the show, there is a lot of, and I have to admit this, one-dimensional villains. The Master wasn't like that. He, he's probably one of the very few villains in Who lore that basically had an added dimension to his character, which only is um, invigorated, the right word to use, added an, added an extra dynamic, which made the character well, more interesting. Sometimes it feels to me that the Doctor doesn't want to stop the Master because he knows that the only way to stop him is to kill him. Yeah. Sometimes, and Absolutely. these are two, as far as I'm concerned, these are the two last beings of their race. Absolutely, yeah. And it's, it's like when you go to eat that last Cornetto. You don't want to eat that last Cornetto. <laughs> there will be no Cornettos left in that box. Yeah, so uh, as I was going back, sadly he died. Anyway, there was something I wanted to talk to you about. Mm. We just been in conversation, and I nearly brung it up before we started the podcast. I have just literally binged watched an entire season because you know I like my comedies. I do. Um, there's a, I say new comedy. It, it isn't that new anymore. It's been out a year or so called Derry Girls. Oh, I remember seeing the trailers for this. Oh, you that. need to watch it. That's one where they're all in school, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's basically the uh, premise of the comedy. Dairy is, Girls. Is uh, for, no, tell like, a, a bunch of Irish a women. A gaggle. A gaggle of women. <laughs> a gaggle of women, because that doesn't sound uh, derogatory in any way, shape or well, form. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, well, what do you call a group of women? You've either got like a herd, a horde, a gaggle, a murder. <laughs> oh, a murder dear. of women is a group oh, of women. Oh, dear. Is, what's the scientific term for a group of people? I don't know. Please, uh, for, those, for those listening to us, please correct us in the comment section. But anyway, going back in the conversation a little bit, it's about basically a group of women, uh, school girls, mm. um, in London, Derry Island. And it also, and this is very interesting because I, I, I want to point out, not many comedies do this. Some do make light of a dark subject. It's basically set in the early 90s. Now, for those who don't know what London Day was like in Ireland in the early 90s, it wasn't It wasn't brilliant. So, But it's, somehow, it's not necessarily making light of a dark subject um, in a derogatory manner, but for those who don't understand what I'm trying to get at, I strongly suggest you, wa- you watch it. It is a very interesting comedy. It has... A very, uh, as bizarre as this description sounds, it has a very black adder element to it. Not, I'm not, I'm not hinting that the characters are in any way like the characters in Black Adder, but it's very much the concept of what they did in the the last season. season Sergeant Black Blackadder Adder definitely did not <laughs> shoot that lovely plump pitch. <laughs> Sorry, but it made. It, it did. It wasn't the one thing that's they made light of me. a bad situation. Yeah. Which, it, Obvious, a lot of people Sorry, don't... I, 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 my sinuses is blocked, so you have to apologise to the occasion. A lot of people... <laughs> I think a show like that is good because that is a real dark time in our history and it's not even 20 years ago. See, in my, I did performing arts in Accrington and Rosendale College. I think it was a year... Uh, I think it was a year, maybe two years after I left Blackburn College. I did performing arts. I think so. Uh, when you say performing arts, I'm now imagining you in a tutu doing all the ballet stuff. Please elaborate. <laughs> I did a year in performing arts, and there was different sections of performing arts that you could study. One of them was singing and dancing. The other was pantomime. And I, uh, there was a, a third section. I can't remember what it was, but I did pantomime. 
And we did a... Oh, no, you didn't. (laughs) We did a a section of pantomime. So, obviously, we had to study humour. And one of the uh, references, uh, because it was basically... There was an essay we had to to do to describe the different elements of humour. And what intrigued me is that I had to make a very valid point in the differences between Frankie Boyle's type of humour and Gallo's humour. Now, for those who are probably lo- listening to me now with a very confused expression on their faces, sick humour is, if you've ever seen Frankie Boyle... You or know what we mean. Comedians like Roy Chubby Brown. They or are, Al Murray is a they, personal favourite, but it's one name you wouldn't want to be in they, the front row. Yeah, they are comedians who try to make fun of a disaster, of a tragedy. Yeah. Whereas Gallo's humour is... Being aware and making the audience aware of a very sinister um, either environment, a subject, but making light of it. Let, let me uh, just let so, me elaborate. So it's basically like saying the term gallows humour comes from we're going to die, we are about to get hung, is it but like, we might as well um, have a laugh while we're doing it. It's like that bit in Black Adder where he's got the firing squad and it's like any request, yes, um, postpone Absolutely, it for 20 yeah. years. Defining example there, you've just hit the nail could on you, the head. Could you say it really slowly? Yeah. No, I can't, sir. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm just... I'm, I've just got that in me. I'll just run it over. Yeah, so basically that's precisely what Gallo's humour is. For those look back at Blackadder. The other seasons of Blackadder, the earlier seasons of Blackadder, did sort of explore this, but the last season the, they ever did. The war. The yeah. war one, I think, is good because it's uh, World War One. Yes, it And was. we were actually shown that in school because they show the horrors of war, but as well, it's making light of it. Like, Baldrick is a lower class person, so... He was drafted into the war, but he never got no school in her intelligence. Absolutely. It's it's also, that's precisely what Gallo's humour is. Is If you watch an episode of Blackadder, they are not, they, I, as far as I remember anyway, they don't actually make a joke about World War One. They make a joke about the, the, do you know what I mean? The, it's, the conditions not, they live in. Yeah, but, be, but that's precisely what Gallo's humour is. But anyway... Derry Girls does uses a very similar technique. So like I said previously, for those who are unaware and have Netflix, bang it on your Netflix. It's, it should be on your recommended because it's quite a substantially popular show. Um, so yeah, I don't I think it will be it. on America's Netflix. Um, it might be. It's it might worth, be. It's have worth, a look. It's worth yeah, a look. Have a look. Um, and of course, it's set in Ireland, so they do talk a lot. Yeah, you might have to, for those who... Subtitles. Yeah, they have no, strong accents. They do. Put it that way. Um, so yeah, another point. Have, what have you been up to this week? Just working mainly. Yeah, no. Yeah. Have you not been reading or watching anything besides Derry um, Girls? I've been binge watching, uh, well, as, as you already know, I've been uh, binge watching Derry Girls. Mm. Uh, binge watching Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Ah, oh, Deep Space Nine. Yes. You're not, uh, how, how, how were, I know you're aware of the show, but how knowledgeable about Deep Space Nine? I don't remember much of Deep Space Nine at all because it's one that I didn't really enjoy it, so I didn't watch it. But I do remember, when it comes to Star Trek, I've got this weird thing. There's always one character that I normally like, and it's always the same sort of character. I like your data. <clears throat> I like your um, Spock. I like your... In Voyager, I really like Tuvok and yeah. the Doctor. And in Deep Space Nine, I really like the Doctor as well. Yeah, absolutely. I can't remember the Doctor. He's not human in Deep Space Nine, isn't he? Was he, he a was. clone or he was, was he made? No, or? no. Funny, bizarre you should remember that. He was genetic. He was human. He was He was born on Earth. He was genetically enhanced. Right, because yes. Because there was, there was a big storyline because what people don't necessarily know about Star Trek... Well, no, actually, that's that's actually... I, I'm, I've actually I'm actually telling a lie there. Everyone knows nice. Star Trek. It, they're all spin-offs of each other. Yeah. They're all related to each other. And basically, the the, the character, because I, I remember all the names now, it's all afresh in my memory because I've just recently been watching I think the captain them. was quite good. Dr. Bashir was following, believe it or not, following the story arc of... Khan, 
You know, Wrath of Khan, Captain Kirk. Oh yeah, yeah, Khan. Kirk, Kirk, Kirk. Because basically, what the what the stu- what the concept was with Khan, Khan. In uh, for those who hasn't watched Wrath of Khan, and you call yourself a Star Trek fan, how dare you? Um, or the J.J. Abrams was, remake inha- with Benedict Cumberbatch. Well, yes, absolutely. Forgot about that. Fresh in people's bold, memories. Yes, well, he's basically Wolverine. And, and I love Benedict Cumberbatch as well. But basically, getting go, going off on a tangent here, uh, get to the point. Uh, Dr. Bashir's character in Deep Space Nine follows the, follows the story arc of genetically enhanced people. And basically, the, what his storyline was, because obviously Khan's time was about 100 years before... Deep, Even the events of uh, Deep Space Nine, it, because of what the the crimes Khan did in Kirk's time, and um, genetically enhanced people was outlawed by the Federation. So Doctor Bashir, what happened was uh, his story arc is when he was a young child. So this was with obviously without his consent, his parents genetically enhanced him because he had learning difficulties, believe it or not, or he was slow. So they genetically enhanced him to make him very intellectually superior and he had to hide that fact from the Federation to get a job. Which I thought, I know we said avoid political, but just that from a storyline perspective is intriguing. Sorry, I was a bit far far away there. Yeah, no worries. So no, Jesus, I didn't realise that. Yeah. I'm f- I- I'm obsessed with Star Trek, everybody. If well, you just sci-fi. Like yeah, Star Trek is one of them. It's good sci-fi and good world building in all the series, and it's one of them. You either do you really like Star Trek and you really like Star Wars, but a lot of people forget all the other sci-fi that helped make this. Like absolutely, the same time as Star. Everyone forgets that Star Trek, the original, only ran for two seasons and then got cancelled. Didn't get very good ratings originally. Yeah, and you have other sci-fi, like you said. Blake Seven, which is forgotten about. It's like British. It, it is. It, the, the, sorry to cut you off there. There was another show we were talking about earlier on this week, which is really bizarre. And in the comments, Dave mentioned something that I've actually been rewatching with my dad occasionally, and that's uh, Buck Rogers. I could never get into that. I don't know if it's because it's too dated, but I found it it's hard not, to get I've, into. I found it's aged really well. Do you reckon? Yeah, I think a lot of the episodes make more sense now. Wow, interesting actually. I'll have to, I'll have to tr- try not to be so judgmental on TV shows and try well, to I, give it I actually re-watch. didn't like it as a child. I saw the funny little robot, which is, yeah. um, for those that don't know, the little robot Twiggy is voiced by Mel Blanc. Mel Blanc, uh, the greatest voice actor of all time, <laughs> who voiced basically every Looney Tunes you've heard. Wow, I didn't know and that. And he's actually... Any voice actor, if you ask them who's greatest, they will say the voice of um, Bugs Bunny for one reason. And he did one thing that almost no voice actor, to the best of my knowledge, most other people's, has been able to do. Would you like to know what this is? Go on. So the Go voice on, actor of Bugs Bunny yeah. and Daphne Duck, he voices both of them. And in one take, he voiced Donald, um, Daphne Duck. And Bugs Bunny having an argument with each other, so going back and forth between two voices in one script, while also voicing Bugs Bunny doing an impression of Daphne Duck, and Daphne <laughs> Duck doing an impression of Bugs Bunny. So he's essentially, in one take, in one studio, there is a man having an argument with himself as two characters who were impersonating two characters. Mind you, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, voice actors, that mu- I tell you who must do that on a free, uh, daily basis, are the actors who do uh, The Simpsons. Because isn't like one actor, like one voice actor, one typical voice actor in The Simpsons does like half a dozen to yeah, a dozen Yeah, there is ca- someone that characters. does loads. Yeah. Um, one of my favourite voice actors is actually... When it comes to voices and sounds, it's actually Peter Cullen. Name rings, I know name the name. rings a bell, it should. Yeah, it's, it's ding, ding, ding. Peter yeah. Cullen uh, voiced all the uh, sounds and noises for Predator, like all the yes, gurgles and I know, clicks. I know. Uh, yeah. King Kong, um, Optimus Prime, Little Well. <laughs> he, he's weird. He does, he's got this booming voice, so he can do monstrous roars and. Wow, yeah. I Transformers. Knew the, I, knew, I, I knew the name as soon as you said it. Transformers is one of them. I grew up with it. I love it. And it's good sci-fi. I love the original. But I found out something about uh, the how he got the role as Optimus Prime. And it's it's quite a sad story. Do so tell. Peter Cullen was a, a voice actor and he was struggling. And he, at the time, in the 80s, was living with his brother who had just come back from, I think it's the Vietnam War back then. Yeah, and his uh, brother was 
struggling big time, and they both were, but his brother was struggling big time mentally right. with the stuff he'd done over there. <clears throat> I don't think he ever elaborates on it. Like, obviously, it's just interviews and things. Mm, interesting. So he woke up one morning and Peter goes to his brother and says, um, I've got a, I've got a gig. <laughs> so brothers being how they are, it's like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm voicing a, a truck. Oh, <laughs> So wow. his brother ribs him a bit, you know. And he says, yes, but it's a hero truck. And then in this interview, I watch with Peter Cullen. He says, now this this is the thing I will never forget. I, I, I do it, but I'm so terrified. From, um, <clears throat> from what his brother said, his brother laughed and then stopped and being fresh out of this war in this military. And yeah. they're living to, they were struggling financially because none of them could find work. And Peter Cullen's brother turned around to him and said, after laughing and all the jokes, so, well, if yeah. you're going to be a hero you, and a leader... You've got to be a proper one. Don't be this big action man that we're used to these days that like laughs as they, you know, take down the villain. You've got to be strong enough to be kind. Mm. And apparently the entire Optimus Prime thing, there were other people that went in for the voice and the role. And when Peter walked in, he said like he actually, the voice he did, he chose to try and imitate how his brother speaks. Wow. And he thought he'd fluffed the role and was never going to get called back because he saw other people coming in and this is the time of G.I. Joe and Action Man and all that. So they went in and these larger-than-life action characters like, yeah! Wow. And you've got a man coming in who's trying to be this... Like, a leader has to be kind enough or strong enough to be kind. Wow, interesting. If you like that type of thing, have you ever... Th- I don't know if you've ever heard of it. You probably have. Have you heard of a... Sh- Quite a, quite a, well, very old TV show now called Mash. I have heard of Mash, and yes. I, I have seen it. That, believe it's... it or not, is a comedy. Yeah, a lot of people didn't realise that. Yeah, yeah. I remember afterwards, because it had quite a poignant ending as well, didn't it? It did, yeah, basically. Same as Black Adder went that route. Like... Yeah, it, it took a dark... Um, well, not... Is dark the right word? Well, Black Adder definitely went dark. You could, there's no dis, there's no dismissing the that fact ending that Black of Black Adder. Adder. If anyone oh. has knows what I'm on about, the end of Black Adder, the war season, that brought oh, a tear d- to my. I, 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 t- I tell you why. I tell you why. I don't know. Now I've heard, I've heard of concepts of phantom pregnancies. Bear with me. Now for those who don't know, I've never actually brung it up on the show yet. I am um, having a child. Uh, my ex-girlfriend is carrying I you my were just child. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But, no, you're all right. No, basically, my my ex-girlfriend, who I'm still speaking to, is uh, carrying my child. And I believe I, she listens to us. So, uh, yeah, I know we've never met, but hi, hi, Terry. I hope you're okay. And basically, um, I don't know what it is, but I've been getting over emotional recently. And there was a scene, and I wish I could remember what it was, but I'm, I was blubbering like a, <laughs> like that. And for some reason, I'm trying to avoid powerful scenes for, some, for the past several your, days. Your emotions quite high. Where everything going on? I mean, you, you're having a child. So. There's 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 no way around it. Yeah, as I look at my nine week uh, or twelve week scan, I think that is. Yeah. So we are due a 20-week scan in a couple of weeks. So if any one of our listeners, I won't bore them because they might not be, but if anyone is interested in, uh, you know, in the in the process <laughs> of me becoming a father, then I'll yeah. keep you up. We're not going to put videos means. of the birth or anything I'll, I'll up. keep you updated. <laughs> no, I, um, absolutely not. We're not that kind of chit channel. No. Guys and girls. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got a couple oh, more weeks. The, should I should I bring up um, our interesting phone conversation last night? I don't remember. I was knackered. Oh, I just um, come back <laughs> from a lovely meal at a cash. Yes, like a cash in Darwin. Um, do you reckon with my girlfriend, they, so. they should get a reference in our because they are a very good restaurant for those who who listen to us who live locally. No, they should reference us. Yeah, we need the publicity, <laughs> not them. They've been going for thirty oh, years. Have they? I didn't even know they were going or on for that long. even longer than that. Like, I wow, know. I didn't know that. Um, but no, anyway. I, 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 no, I, but it was a really good... Like, five out of five. I should elaborate our dear listeners to uh, try and understand what we're talking about. I was on the phone to Koala Tom uh, last night, and we was talking about... That name's never going to sit right with well. <laughs> Which one, Koala or Tom? Well, I've had Tom for 24 years. I'm just getting used to it, but Koala... <laughs> But anyway, I was on the phone to him, and basically I said I would ring him back. I was making a brew for me and me dad, and safe to say, 
as I, I where I was, I was standing in the kitchen. And oh! Yeah. <laughs> Drinking my coffee. And you know how it is, you know, you, I, and I swear to my ever, ever faithful audience, my ever faithful listeners, that I was not going out my way to be nosy. But you know how it is. You gazing outside the window. And you're eye in the dark, especially. <laughs> if you see light, you just look at it. You can't avoid it. You can't avoid it. it. You so, see it. So I am supping my brew, and I see two shadows in a window in a house opposite my, the back of my house. And these two shadows are making the most interesting postures. <laughs> that just caught my attention. With the way these shadows were moving, it was pretty obvious what they were doing. What was Mating you? season was in session, guys and girls. Don't talk about that. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, as I, 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 as I think, as there's no way to get around this, as I just caught a glimpse of what were going on, the two heads of these shadows turned and looked towards me. And because, obviously, my instincts were kicking in, I turned away. And because I turned away, it even looked it probably probably looked even more suspicious. So as I turned away, two seconds later the light switched off, and I looked to my I turned to my right, and where I was standing, the way my kitchen is, there's a unit. I was stood between the kitchen unit and the window, and as I turned to my right, at the opposite side of the unit is my dining table where my daddy sat, and. I was contemplating whether or not to show what I had just seen. I mean, yeah, but <laughs> that it's... might be like sometimes it might be hard to turn to your dad. Yeah, dad, the neighbours they were proper going at it. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ! So, however, better judgment did prevail because as I looked at my dad, there's a seventy odd year old man on his iPad really want to uh, hear my <laughs> my my, my oh, what, what I had just observed and. Be- Again, as I previously just said, better judgment prevailed and I chose not to because he probably didn't want to know. So, yeah, and I, t- but I told you, though, on the phone. Yeah, about no, minutes I couldn't after. stop laughing. <laughs> oh, um, dear. Something has caught Tom's eye. No, I'm just thinking. So what have I been up to this week? What have you been up to this week? I don't know. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've been, uh, if anyone wants a decent comic rep- like recommendation, I would recommend, especially if you're into... Um, one-offs or stories that go a different way. You, sorry, it's got you off there. Are you about to bring up the link that you sent me? No, right, but okay. I, I will. Um, no, you can talk I've, about I've, what I've, you I've, want. I've, <laughs> I've, I've spoken about it before, but like with you, uh, Batman White Knight. Now yes, this, you this, did. This is, I, I will have to lend it you. This is a, a comic that goes completely different. It's not for children. Before anyone thinks, oh, a comic recommendation. I'll get this for my little kid. And then uh, we start getting angry messages like, what did you make my job? <laughs> but basically what it is, is it shows just how uh, unhinged a character can become so quickly. So the basic premise, without giving too much weight, and there's a lot more to it. The Joker gets become sane. And because of all the years of him being a Joker and everyone's just seen what he's done. Whenever he's been arrested, the GCPD have never filed charges against him. They've just thrown him in prison like, he's done this, yeah, fair enough. So they've just messed up the paperwork. So the only thing he's actually ever been accused of is robbing one bank when he was in his 20s. Who's this son? The Joker. The Joker, so ah. He, something happens and some tablets might get forcibly like put down his throat by a rather large pointy-eared man and it, quote, cures him. So what he decides to do when... His sentence is actually up for the crime he did years ago. And when these pills are forced down his throat, it's in front of uh, all the police. And they just see just how savage Batman can become and how unhinged he is. And there is more going on behind the scenes with Batman. There's an illness in the family uh, with Alfred. And it's a lot of um, like the Robins and the Nightwings and Batgirl point out that if anything happens to Alfred... Well, he's Batman's moral compass. This is Bruce Wayne's moral compass. Right. Like, you've seen it in any movie or anything. When something happens to Alfred, or when something Batman's about to go too far, who reigns him in? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Batman is losing it a bit. And so the Joker gets out, 
And all he does in his time while he's in prison for like a couple of months or weeks is read the law. And he decides, well, I'm cured now. He doesn't have the laugh. He doesn't even look like Joker. He's Jack Napier now. One of Joker's real names. Mm. And uh, he takes Batman and the GCPD to court for like all the crimes that Batman is committing because he's a vigilante. He's driving through the city on a unlicensed weaponized tank he's and it spirals from there and it gets really good and there is more going on there's um there's there's there is just it's just a really fantastic read Mm, i i was going to bring something up as well actually Um, i've also been playing uh the new ghost recon game going back into the conversation i don't want to talk about it constantly i i i, I do feel it deserves a reference i was in and on for the past few weeks we've been doing this but have you ever i don't want to go too much into it because if i describe it i'd be here for half an hour have you ever heard of the Maysburg's personality test it rings a bell, but I can't... It is, it is meant to be... Uh, it, it was created by a team, if history serves, serves its purpose, or at least my knowledge of history serves its purpose. It was created by a team of psychiatrists, and it's meant to be one of the most accurate personality tests in the world. And I did my... Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go in more depth about it in a, in a separate episode, if people want to. Is this the one that... Um can accurately show what's wrong upstairs with some people and like diagnose people potentially yes and i just wanted to say do you know out of all the batman characters out there who has my personality if you Uh, had to hazard a guess this is very interesting penguin no everyone keeps saying penguin all the people it might be the walk it's actually two-face believe it or not well, I I like when people do a personality test on a character like Batman. I, I think it's I think it's very because Batman is the most mentally unstable. He's got all this technology, which it goes in this White Knight comic. Yeah, he doesn't even give the police. Can't which believe he, Penguin. <laughs> he he can afford. He doesn't even give the police updated bulletproof vests. So the police are dying in droves in the city because he wow. he won't give them the advanced Kevlar. He um puts people into a. Uh, Arkham Asylum, a mental hospital ward for the criminally insane, whereas Bruce Wayne could afford to update the security to the point where no one would ever be able to escape. But does he? No. So do you reckon he's so masterminding? A, a lot, are, you, are you suggesting he's masterminding a lot all these of, villains there escape? Is a, there are theories out there that he puts them in somewhere he knows they'll break out just so he can put them back in again. Like keeping himself employed. Wow. I mean, Good concept. Don't forget, Good Batman theory. can't be entirely sane. It's a, it's a six-foot-odd man in his nearly 40s running around with a kid on the rooftop in a skimpy costume, beating people to, like, near death, leaving them on the street in a city he knows is really corrupt. So how many people has he killed by accident? Definitely. And yeah. in that vein, the thing I sent you, The Dark Knight. Which, I, even though I haven't seen the entire film, I as weird sent... as it's... Uh, uh, yeah, go on. I think you better describe this. So, when we talked last week about uh, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and I brought up the source material, and Irvine hadn't seen it, I sent him one clip from the movie, and all I said was, this is the sort of thing I was on about. Why this? Why wasn't this in the movie? And it's a poignant moment. It's, it's a moment, without going too far in the... Um, the story and ruining it. Superman, who hasn't aged, uh, flies and meets a really old, bitter Bruce Wayne. And it's one of them thinly veiled... It's not even... It's 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 a straight out Superman, as nice as he can be. And in the comic and in the hit series, this movie, they've done it really well. The first time you see Superman, he's shirt open, hair blowing in the wind he holds up his arm and an american bald eagle lands on it so it's like this man represents america <laughs> and he turns to bruce wayne who's like with a horse or something yeah. and he threatens to his face the wo- the world's most powerful man superman who is now controlled by a government turns to batman and says look if you don't quit i'm gonna make you quit and they bring up all this like thing and bruce wayne Basically, knowing that this man could 
Superman could, if he wanted, turn around and just turn him into a, a red stain on the floor. I hate Superman. He's such a self-indulgent prick, isn't he? I know. I mean, like... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I know. I know. From what I've seen, I don't really want to say most of Superman lore. Well, Captain but America was the same for me. Whiter than white character. It annoys me, man. It but genuinely he, does. He is the one made for more children. Where yeah. they've all seemed to have aged and moved with time, not Superman, but Superman does have some fantastic story arcs. And he probably does. He probably like, does. But. I mean, Christopher Reeve, Superman, I could watch over and over again. No, Christopher Reeve. He he did it. Whoa. But Superman is, he's supposed to be like. He is Superman. He upholds justice and yeah. honour and truth. and the, Which Captain America was the same for me until the re- later um, Marvel movies changed him. Which I really liked. Like, um, Who's this, sorry? Captain America. Captain America. For me, he was yeah. the same as Superman. I just didn't like the character. See, I enjoy Captain America. I don't know why. I mean, this is... Uh, you can, for those listening, we'll probably uh, get the opportunity to get a piece of my psyche now. But I, I don't, not relatable, but for some reason, I enjoy Captain America's character more than Superman. I think it's because... I mean, this is genuine speculation because I don't actually know why. He was the underdog. He comes from, well, no, I wasn't even going to say a year. He was, but he came from more humble backgrounds. Superman, let's look at look, let's look no, at his but, background. An alien, yeah, do you know what I mean? Who can relate don't to forget, that? When it comes to background, Superman is supposed to be, he is really humble. Yeah. Like, oh, the character is humble. I'm not dismissing it's that. It's said a lot in the comics that, um, and playing him, like, yeah. for those that don't know, there was actually a nearly finished movie of Superman made by Tim Burton, yeah. where Superman was played by Nicolas Cage. Because Superman is supposed to be that farm boy from Kansas that knows right and wrong. Yeah. And a lot of the things the comics say is if it weren't for um, his parents that raised him on Earth, who names escape me, Martha, that's it, yeah, Ma- just because of that famous scene. Um, <laughs> if it weren't for those two people, he could have been a murdering psychopath. Yeah. So he, he could have taken up, but because he was instilled with such like, Virtues, yeah. and I want to know how they disciplined him as a child. Did they have like a fucking? I mean, the ship crashed, and in all the things, so they must have had kryptonite and like whipped him with it or something. <laughs> oh no! Oh, Go to your room, <laughs> Clark. <laughs> oh dear, the, this conversation has already took a turn for the worst. <laughs> oh dear. You, I mean, oh yeah, but how do you discipline a child that can fly and throw a car at you? Interested, actually. Yeah. Then again. Do you dis- his dad was Kevin Costner in the recent movies, and that's a man you won't fuck with. <laughs> I mean, oh, Kevin Costner. Now, I, I he's know been in he some gets absolute ribbed. shit. Yeah, and I know, he, I know he gets ribbed because when he did Robin Hood, Prince of uh, Prince of Thieves, Waterworld. world. <laughs> you know, people were, were, were ribbing him a little bit because how he pronounced Nottingham. Because he, oh yes, he can tell he's America. Let's face it, Kevin Costner. You know, one of the pinnacle actors of my personal childhood childhood of the 90s he's a fucking badass wired up when he played wired up badass characters lo- badass yeah um have you ever seen sorry this leads me no, on to no, something no, else no, go on, go have you on. ever seen that show it's on netflix it was a sci-fi show as well um why nona Earp? <laughs> i've heard of it i've never actually oh, watched man. it though it's it's like your bulk standard supernatural shit show that's awesome Elaborate. <laughs> so the premise of Winona Earp, if I'm even pronouncing that wrong, it's a weird name. She, it's set in Monday, she is the descendant of Wyatt Earp. And what the show is about is every single criminal that Wyatt Earp ever put to death, arrested or killed has come back as a revenant. And if they can, they are trapped within an area called like the Triangle or something, which is a big area. Yeah. If they manage to kill every single member of Earp's bloodline, they get to leave. And they will ravage the world forever and are unkillable. Now, the only thing that can kill them is Wyatt Earp's gun, wielded by one of his blood descendants. If Wyatt Earp's descendants manage to kill every single one of the revenants, then the curse is lifted and they never come back and the Earp bloodline is safe. It resets every time an Earp heir dies. So there's one who's like uh, one of their great granddaddies. He's called like the 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 one year wonder because in one year he nearly tracked down and killed every single revenant before they killed him. Wow! But then when he died, all the ones that died just came back. So they have to do it without dying. 
Yeah. And it's, it's a good show and it gets more supernatural elements. There's um, the character. She's hated in the town. She comes back. The curse starts. Um, you've got a government agency that tracked down supernatural entities and uh, Doc Holliday was actually cursed. So he's basically immortal. So he's 200 years old and he's that... It's that character. It's a man out of time. And what's the name of this show again? Winona Earp. It's. I've got to look it up. It's to be a good show. With you. It's got. It seems like it has a higher yeah. budget than some things. Yeah. It's. It's quite good. Like the first season is all about these revenants, and then the second season it elaborates more into the supernatural world. And there seems to be a a Q like character who's like a caretaker who shows up every now and then. They're always caretakers. Have you noticed that, especially in yeah, well, science that... fiction or even. Even uh, fantasy uh, genre. There's always type a shows. There's, there's always, always an a, omnipotent being who tends watcher. to be the, yeah, yeah. Code named caretaker. I have noticed that. Um, it's funny you should bring up or delve into the genre, into the time period, because it, obviously it was a factual place. The Western times did actually happen, so I don't know if they qualify to be they? a genre. I thought America was a myth. <laughs> Nothing can be that fucked up. But anyway, I, I, I research certain times uh, certain parts of history yeah, they I, I, got, interest I, you. I yeah i go through phases like for instance let, let me give you a little substance on what i'm trying to get at here i went through a three or four week obsession phase of completely studying into vincent van gogh fantastic uh, and for the past week or so maybe two at a push i've been obsessing with billy the kid now do you know who that is um I'm guessing it was uh, some little child called Billy. Or... He, he was, no, he, I know who he is. <laughs> yeah. Famous I, was, I was starting to panic. And basically, even though at this moment in time, because I, I like to say I knew quite a bit about him already, what I didn't know is he died at 21. Yeah. I didn't know but that. This was a time when people lived to like 30 or 40. Well, he got lucky. shot to death. This wasn't yeah. by any natural causes of disease. I get <laughs> Billy the Kid and <clears throat> Butch Cassidy and the Sundance confused sometimes because they, ah, both, they both had yeah. similar deaths, didn't yeah, they? Yeah. As, uh... But basically, as I researched into his life, and again, those who know, <clears throat> who are better educated in this subject than me, feel free to uh, say something in the comment section. As always, it's always welcome and invited. But from what I could tell is that this was a guy who ha- had very, I like to, that's the word of the episode, humble backgrounds. That's a the theme of this well, episode. Well, back then, everyone had And didn't have any choice. He, he had to convert to, well, not convert, but resort to a life of crime. His mum had just died. And the, and the man who uh, his mother had remarried, his stepdad, didn't want anything to do with him. So he started his life on the streets. So that's how he, he got a job. And basically people kept firing off, sacking him for uh, reasons that was out of his control. See, a lot of things, like, like a lot of history is like that. Like, there's a musical, um, Hamilton. Yes. You heard about it. I'd Alexander just... Hamilton had really humble backgrounds and had all this bad stuff. Yeah. I don't know too much about him. A lot of history and a lot of American people, they had real yeah. bad backgrounds and they made something of themselves, which ties into their American dream. Well, would you say Billy the Kid made something of himself? Or do you reckon he, he, he's just... Um, well, uh, he died, like, what, 200 years ago and we're still talking about him. Ah, you've actually touched on something there. Yeah. People talk about the myth the legends let let's not let let's not sugarcoat this of Billy the Kid. Right. But the truth is, people didn't really. I don't want to use the word celebrate his name until after he's yeah, dead. Yeah, well, that's a, quite a common thing. Like you said, the, like Van Gogh or the Van Gogh effect. Yeah. He wasn't famous. Until after I'm he sensing died. a theme here. Are the type of people that intrigue me, but caveat. <laughs> Howard Phillips Lovecraft. Everyone knows Cthulhu and Lovecraft in horror, but when he was alive, no one knew who he was. Absolutely, yeah. No. I mean, don't get me wrong. If everyone reads his work, it's he basically yeah. just he thought he was intelligent and he just put as many big words in as he could. It, do you reckon it's because it's human nature to want to celebrate? As harsh as this is, I mean to say this is just pure speculation. I don't know the answer. I'm genuinely on the fence in this. I think. Do you reckon human nature likes to explore and and celebrate a tortured soul? I think if, we do, but at the same point, I I think we're I'm, I want to say we're past that and I don't mean we don't like it I mean 
because of Facebook and the internet and everything, we will never have... Like, Billy the Kid, one reason he's loved is we don't know everything about his life. Well, look at the amount of musicians that are celebrated to this day that that could be perceived as tortured souls. Janis Joplin, Kurt Cobain... Yeah, but do you think you know, we're Ian ever... Curtis, sorry, go on, Would go on. we ever have that again? Because if... You're never really going to have that because you won't have blanks in people's lives because if there was, like, in... 30, 40 years, like, oh, look at this person, they were a tortured soul. You know everything about their life because they posted on Facebook, they had Twitter, they had Facebook, they had, you know, they had everything. Possibly, possibly, So yeah. I don't think we have the same sort so of... So do you think because the the Interesting, you're probably right in saying... That's a very compelling argument, to say the mm. least. So you're probably right there because all these platforms we have oh, now... Oh, we know more basis. about these tortured souls. Yeah. I mean, I do like... You gotta think One... when Billy the Kid died, mental illness was nowhere near as well known oh, as it no, is today. No. So. It's like And I'm not insinuating Billy the Kid had a mental illness, but Van Gogh, better example. Yeah, it like probably had depression. Yeah. One of my favourite things that shows mental illness years and years ago is actually a quite recent thing I've mentioned to you. It's a game yeah. called Hellblade Senua Sacrifice, which is supposed to be supernatural, but really she's yeah. just going through psychosis. She's yeah. hearing voices, she's seeing things that aren't there. Absolutely, yeah. And but anyway, on. this week, to anyone that is interested, I have been playing... Uh, yes, the... we got sidetracked. Sorry, I, have I, been... do apolog... I do apologise. I have been playing the beta of Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon uh, Breakout, or the next one, whatever it is, the newest one coming out. So for anyone that wants to know my thoughts on that, it's like the first game, but slightly better. Like, they've added a lot more, and they've gone with the... Um, it's got a real feeling, at first, anyway, of... Uh, if anyone's ever seen the Owen Wilson movie where he's the last man behind lines or a movie like Behind Enemy Lines, which actually I think that's what it's called. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah, the, yeah. And it, it sort of has that to begin with. And it, it feels very good. Um, but admittedly, the way I play games, you can... It's a much more tactical game. So you can cover yourself in mud... So when soldiers walk by, you're just like a lump of mud on the floor. The moment I found out I could do that, I spent 20, 30 minutes of the beta rolling around like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, wow. The AI react more. It's You can cut fences. You can be more tactical. You can hide in water. You can. It's got more of a class-based system. So you pick soldier, medic, uh, stealth, all that. So for anyone that liked the first game but felt it, it were, could have been more, yeah. in the first game, I felt like it was a baby's first metal gear this game is more in depth with the stealth with the weapons with everything and it will have raids and tiered rarities that can unlock and there's lots to do and that's all i'm going to say about it oh interesting so if you had to rate uh I put it on the spec uh uh, uh victor scale i'm gonna say specter scale then victor scale don't ask um 10 being the Best game you've ever played in, in the entirety of your life to one being the worst. Where would you put this game? I'd give it a solid six or seven. Six or Maybe seven. five, five and a half to six. It's not an amazing game, but it's it's a, a quite a good game. It's quite realistic. Hmm. Interesting. I, I can't... I don't, I'm not playing a lot of games recently, but I am trying to polish up on that. See, I tend to obsess with... Very few games. I don't play an awful lot of games, but the games I'm interested in, I tend to obsess. Give you a little uh, substance here. Grand Theft Auto, the entire franchise of Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, but I love how British it stayed to its roots. You can tell it's written by British people. When you're playing the game, you look around and see all these little like puns and jokes and things like that that sometimes yeah. are on people's heads. Absolutely. Care to elaborate and give us an example? I mean, there's the entire in, I think it's five, the newest one in it. Yeah. yeah. In the... That game, you've got Life Invader as an, instead of, like, Facebook, and you've got, like, iFruit, and there's <laughs> yeah. an entire mission about it. <laughs> yeah. and in the older ones, you've got, like, the radio presenters, and, like, yeah. sometimes just listen to all the signs around. Did you ever just listen to the radio presenters? I did. Just drive around, not do I any did. missions, just to listen to the radio presenters, and some of the most interesting things, especially like, especially the talk show ones. I like. <laughs> I remember some of them, and it's like a, there's a guy in Vice City who's a radio presenter in it, and he's called like Fernando. 
Yeah. Fernando knows how to talk to a woman. Fernando will touch. And he interviews uh, like a Viking woman or something that's yeah. big, and he's like, for man, Fernando knows he likes the bigger lady to keep him warm in the winter. Oh, there was be- no the, the best radio presenters in the GTA game has got to be. I do remember a lot of the Vice City ones, but it's was more it? known for music. The Vice City Vice, one, Vice City, wasn't it? Like Amy Shagan have me, yeah. Or something? yeah. But the uh, GTA San Andreas, there was some interesting radio presenters in that as well. The thing with Grand Theft Auto games is Grand Theft Auto games, as weird as it sounds, always broaden my music horizons until the newer ones. Understandably so. It had one that effect my, on a lot of people. One of my favourite songs is Kenny Rogers' The Gambler, which I only got from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I only knew of an artist called Laura Branigan. I didn't even know of her existence, which is saying a lot because my knowledge of 80s music is quite formidable, would you say? Well, so I, I, I'm only a fan of hers because of Vice City. I don't know about you, but when it comes to me, I was raised... I, I was brought up in the 90s, but I feel like I was raised in, like, the 80s. Just because yeah. <laughs> I, I, I grew up in pubs and around, like, all the people that lived that time. And my parents liked that music. And I watched yeah. those movies and watched those cartoons. And, God, I sound like that military advert, doesn't it? I was born in Carlisle, <laughs> but I was raised in the military. <laughs> Speaking of radio presenters, I do feel like I need to bring this up. Um, Now, there is a guy... Now, I... I I am saying this specifically towards the American listeners. There is a radio presenter who's probably the nicest man on God's green earth. Is it me? But the only trouble is it's he traumatised me, me in my uh, teenage years because I had to sit there when I had to go somewhere with my dad because he was a big listener of Radio 2 and he was a guy called Jeremy Vine. Now, are you aware of this individual? No. He is the most monologued voice whiny voice knit I have ever come across in radio he he sounds so boring no he's English Mm. I I only I only says I I speak uh, directly to the American segment of our audience because they won't know who he is probably Mm. honestly type Jeremy Vine and try to listen to that guy's voice he is boring Uh, you'll have to listen to him Mm. to understand where I'm coming from but yeah I just thought I had to bring that up I only bring it up as well because I forgot of this man's existence until I brought up the trauma until uh, the other day I was going somewhere with my dad and I had to listen to him again and I and I I think I even said to me dad I turned around and said is BBC is radio still not fired this guy yet he said I'll try to give you an example um, give you a 10 second like uh, reenactment of what he sounds like so yeah as I look at Koala and he's dr- drinking the bark he sounds like that and that's not even an exaggeration he sounds like that you'll have to type type him up and listen to him he's so monologued it's unbelievable I genuinely reckon he could wake the dead because I genuinely believe if he walked in a cemetery and started speaking they'd the wake dead up would and go look- like I'm trying to get some fucking <laughs> sleep mate the dead would wake up look at him and walk away because he's that boring like sorry Jamie Vine if you're listening you're probably the nicest man on earth but I on. just imagine a bunch of like zombies walking towards him and then he oh, starts talking yeah. and like one of them just pulls out a pint and goes proper Irish and he's like right so lads that's Let's oh, fuck off. wow. But yeah, I just it's, thought I needed um, to bring that up. It's funny you mentioned what I was drinking. <laughs> so when it comes to drinks, I am like patriotic. So I mainly only drink Bar, which is a British company, and they do bubblegum. Now, I, like everyone else, a couple of years ago, um, obviously we're getting to the end now, nearly an hour. So I'm genuine. No, I, I'm not just saying this. Um, sorry to cut you off there, but... I was I was just going over the, the, the microphone to speak then and I looked at the time and I genuinely can't believe we've been speaking for 50 yeah, I know. minutes. Um, that is weird. But go, carry uh, on. Go I, on. I think we've done well this time. Please let us know in the comments if we have. Yeah, uh, by give, all means, definitely. Uh, should we just put in that whole like? Yeah, fine. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. Yes, We're doing it now. Subscribe. <laughs> I can't get used... I find it so cringy. I don't know about you. Yeah. It I know, feels I like... I, I can understand why. I don't personally think it's cringy, but I can understand why. I feel like I'm will. sat in the corner asking people for change. Please, please like me. Please. Have you got 20p, mate? <laughs> have you got 20p? Please. Can I have 20p? <laughs> Oh dear. But yeah, I am I when I go for a drink, like for a can in a shop, not like alcohol, I actually prefer to drink a British can of pop 
or fizzy or like a tin of pop, as you guys call it. Fair enough. Continue. So bar. Now they do bubblegum and I love bubblegum. And like everyone else, when I was like 16, well, 15 to like 18, well, I'd say about 20, I was addicted to energy drinks. Oh, I couldn't get enough. Now Rockstar, I drank too many of them. Now the only reason I actually drank energy drinks for so long is because as a 20 odd year old man, I cannot without getting weird looks, drink a bottle of Panda Pop made for like a five-year-old child. But what I can drink in public to excess is bubblegum flavoured Rockstar. Because wow. <laughs> bar don't do bigger bottles or like bigger cans. They only do little cans. So bar, if you want to, if you want to do, if you're listening and you want to do energy drink size cans of your pop, please do. But yeah, no, I only <laughs> drank Rockstar and energy drinks because I could drink the children flavors in big cans and look manly. <laughs> like, is that I wasn't doing it for the caffeine. I was doing it because I could still get bubblegum and blue raspberry. <laughs> yeah, understandable, understandable. Oh man, oh, is there anything wow. like that that you do that like something from your childhood you'd love to have, but you can't in good conscience in public stand there and drink? Do you know what? No, because nothing like that phases me. Uh, I don't care if people laugh at me for what I drink. I'm one of these people, and I, I think you'll agree with me. I don't give a shit what people, how I look to other people. No, I don't care how I look normally. Like, my hair's normally messy. I've normally got ripped jeans I on. bought, sorry to cut you off there, I bought, because you, you were about to make a valid point. I bought, uh, now again to our American... Oh, so cut me off, because I was about to make a valid point. <laughs> Is that how this goes? You're not allowed to make valid points. I'm point. not allowed to make valid points. <laughs> <laughs> But basically, what I was going to say, our American audience will, will probably be able to buy it um, all the time. I bought a bottle of root beer. <gasps> root now, right, beer. funny you say that. Go. On. I keep talking to my American because they genuinely think that Europeans, we don't really like root beer that much. So, yeah. But I keep saying, look, send me root beer in crates <laughs> because they want to try Iron Brew, which is a drink. I can't really explain the flavour to them and they can't get over there very easily. So it's a straight swap, isn't it? You send me yeah. root beer, I'll send you iron brew. Do they not? Are they no. not able to get iron brew? It's a Scottish drink. Oh yeah, I know in, that. In but I didn't know they. The, the two things that Scotland exports is um, iron brew and whiskey. In a Scottish McDonald's, you can get iron brew. It's, wow, that's we got, bizarre. We got away well, no, that the, the McDonald's is isn't yeah. That surprising, you can but. get um, iron brew in America, but like if we go and get root beer, it costs an arm and a leg. Sometimes. What, in America? No, over here. Yes, it was. Um, the bottle was um, £2 a bottle. Yeah. It, it, and it the... was only a 500 millilitre yeah, bottle. So, Whereas, yeah. so imagine reverse, but Iron Brew over there is the same. Like Iron Brew here, you can pick up to like 60p a bottle. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember your valid point you were going to make before? What, I always look scruffy and I don't care yeah. what people think. <laughs> yeah. See, I normally don't, but the only thing I that does bother me is when I'm stood there and it's like, you know, I'm drinking a 20 odd P bottle of like pop made for children or fizzy or whatever anyone calls it in very different. Have you noticed that in, in up and down, up and down the UK, we've got different words for like carbonated drinks. We call it fizzy pop. Like northern soft drinks. Yeah. uh, Yeah. I don't get why it's a soft drink. It's not very soft. Like if I hit someone with a bottle, it's going to hurt. Yeah. (laughs) I've got a mate and the most dangerous thing Weapon in existence for this person, who I don't really talk to anymore, is a bottle of Lucas Aid. Why do you not talk to this person? Uh, we just grew apart. It's just one name. It, just it, happens. it happens, doesn't it? That is in life. But yeah, but I thought I, I was sorry, listeners. I was trying to get some dirty laundry out because I know some of us might enjoy gossip. It wasn't happening, but mm. better luck next time. Joking, but go on. So yeah, we. <laughs> I don't really care what I look like, but when it comes to drinking, like mm. something made for a child. Yeah. To be fair, plus it's not there's not really much in it. And I, and I, and for the listeners who don't know what we like, look like, you're quite well groomed. I'd say you're better groomed than me. Only for... recently. I mean, I know I had an Urkel. If I you mean, but I was also struggling really bad with depression, anxiety, yeah. and all that. Did you notice I have an Urkel? You, you didn't notice I had an Urkel. You've been oh. sat next to me for an hour. Honestly, look, did you not right. <laughs> 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 what am I supposed to say to them? Oh. You never mentioned that I had my hair done. <laughs> Don't notice anything. Not notice it. No, honestly. It's shorter than last time. Because well, I had no cut. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, go on. Yeah, you were saying. But no, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, obviously, I didn't look very well because over the past couple of years, I've I've struggled bad with like depression, anxiety, and all that. So I mean, now I'm off work with it. So yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. I guess I don't know where I'm going with this point. Help me, <laughs> say something. <laughs> Some, I'm a genuine believer. I that... think we we are actually sorry to cut you off. We are actually reaching time. It goes over an hour, you know, like last time. So all right, yeah. Uh, basically, we had uh, minor problems last Technical week. Technical difficulties with so, editing. Yeah. So basically, I think we should wrap this up now. Um, is there anything you would like to comment on very very quickly? Uh, no, thanks to everyone that's listening. Yes, thank you. Please, if you know anyone that might like this in the background, um, tell I'll, them. I'll, I I have been told by someone that they just had us in the background and that actually made yeah, me quite happy. Yeah, thank you for that. I put a smile on my face when uh, my colleague, Tom, told me about that. It genuinely did. Yeah. And I'm happy we can provide that type of service because that's what we're about. Yeah. Making people happy, even if it's just like, for an hour. I don't know if anyone's actually noticed the small little thing we've done, but we have no ads on the Facebook. We have no ads on Spotify. We've got nothing. So you're not... We're not making any money. There's, There's not... Any ads, so you know, it's just listen to us. Yeah. But yes. I, anyway. Absolutely. I think we, I think we better get going. Please, uh, please subscribe to us by all means, because I know yeah. Tom's not a huge fan of saying that. And, and you, comment. We really love the comments. Yes. I'm, Any I'm, improvements? Again, we appreciate the faithful audience we've already got. We've received. We genuinely appreciate. Share that. us. And we we do want to get this share a us. bit bigger. And by all means, stay tuned for next week. I have been dancing, Burr. and I've been Koala. And see you. I see better you. get a bacon sandwich by next time, Dave. <laughs> see you next week. See you next week.